Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in on one photo raw 2023. And this is another video in my getting started kind of quick start guide for new users. Today I'm looking at their SkySwap AI technology. And even if you've used this before, this video should give you some tips about how this tool works and how you can get the most out of it. So even if you're not a new user, I still think this will be applicable to you. I'm gonna walk through a demo of how this works. So I've got a photo here. Let's say I wanna replace this guy. A couple of things to think about first, which is normally I would go in and do some things in the develop tab to get my raw file ready to go, that sort of thing. I'm skipping that because it's a pretty evenly lit file. I'm just gonna go straight into Sky and uh, get that swap going. Now, when you do that, you'll see it takes it a moment, but it does automatically build the mask, it detects the sky, and it creates a mask. And so, uh, if you're not familiar, you can click here to look at the mask. I'm gonna click on view, and you can see, there it is. I mean, it's done a pretty good job, honestly, right out of the gate. The horizon looks pretty good, even some of the little bits like that are in the distant uh, horizon, and the little bases here on this, uh, I think that's like a Celtic cross. This was shot in Wales. But anyway, boom, pretty good. Couple things to think about. The first one is I often, uh, not always, it just depends, but very often I would say uh, I come in and I make adjustments. I love the levels uh, option here. And I talked about in the last video on effects, how I use levels. And I'll come back and do a more detailed tutorial on this. But you can basically refine that mask by adjusting this. You can kind of see what's happening. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So all I'm doing is creating a little bit what I would call more of a hard edge to uh, basically more uh, specifically isolate the sky. So every photo is different. Just keep in mind that you may or may not need to refine this. I generally come in and do a little refinement because I want that, well, I want the sky basically to be pure white and I want the rest to be black, right? So I think that looks good. I'm gonna click view. And there we go, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna skip the rest of masking, close that, and just to make it easy, I'm gonna click on sunset and apply a sunset to this photo. Now it goes in, it follows the mask that I just refined that was automatically created, and boom, I'm done. Uh, a couple of things to think about. Number one, there's a whole new bunch of skies in this edition, which are beautiful. They're Ocudrone skies. I did a video about those which you can see there, but you can also add your own. Uh, there's other categories, all that kind of stuff. And so if you come down here, you've got various categories, it's just a drop down, and you can pick your category. And then within that category, you can just pick whatever options you see. But like I said, you can import your own. So I've got my own sky pack, which I sell on my website. There's a link down below, shameless plug, if you're interested. I'm gonna click import, and I'm gonna click import again. And I'm right here, this is called Stunning Sunsets. And I'm gonna grab these 25 skies. I'm gonna click open, and it's gonna say choose category. I'm gonna add a category, and right there, Nick's Stunning Sunsets, that sounds fine. I'll name it that. I'll click OK, I'll click OK again, and there it is, they're in. Takes them a second to go ahead and import these skies. And as soon as it's done, it says it's done. There's no errors, that's good. Uh, and then I hit close and I'm done. So now if I wanna go and take a look at my own skies, I click in this drop down category, I scroll to the bottom and there's Nick's stunning sunsets. I'm just gonna go ahead and go with this default sunset, but that's how I can go in and add my own skies if I want to. So one of the most important things I think, there's two really important, well, there's a lot of important things to be honest, but the two things that I think about the most, number one is what's the direction of the light in the original sky? So sometimes what I will do is turn off the sky that gets in there because especially when you're adding a sunset to a, basically a drab photo, it's really easy to get distracted because you get that visual sugar rush of all that color and excitement. Um, and it's easy to think, that looks so amazing because look at that sunset. And I do that a lot. And then I have to stop myself and say, oh, hang on. Hold on, Jim. You gotta look at the direction of the light because the light in your original photo in the sky is impacting where the light distribution is in the foreground. So you gotta think about that. So it's important to do. So I'm looking at my base photo without the distraction of that new beautiful colorful sunset and it's brighter on the left-hand side a little bit darker on the right. My new sky is the opposite. It's darker on the left and it's brighter on the right. So you have this little button right here, these two little arrows, and it says flip horizontally if you hover over it. So one click and it flips it horizontally. So you can do that and you might need to do that. And I actually think it looks better in this photo if I do that. So one more time, that's the way it was and that's the way it is now. I think that fits a little bit better with the light 
and also uh, the light, I should say, in the foreground. And we're going to get to the foreground lighting in a minute. But that fits a little bit better with the way the foreground was lit in the original photo. And I think it just looks better overall. So keep that in mind. Shift Horizon is, as the name implies, just allows you to go up or down with your sky. This one happens to be fairly narrow. So you could see that the other sky was showing up pretty quickly. But sometimes the sky images are bigger and you have a little bit more room to move. Opacity is the opacity of this sky. So at 100, I'm getting all of that sky. And if I go to zero, I'm getting all of the original sky. And of course, it varies from zero to 100, depending on how far you drag it. A thing to think about here is what's in the original sky. So I can fade this a little bit and it looks pretty good, really. Like that original sky isn't coming through that strong because if you look at it, it's kind of blank. I mean, there's clouds, but they're not like intense or really strong or heavily structured clouds. They're kind of faded clouds, so they're not really coming through very strongly. But if I had really intense clouds or things like that in the sky and I adjusted opacity, they would come through. And so you might have some, I'd call it interference from stuff in your original sky if you fade or reduce the opacity. I generally leave it at 100, but even in this case, I mean, I could take it down and it drops the intensity of that as well because that's kind of what I'm doing. It looks pretty good. 75, I mean, it looks pretty good, you know, the more I lower it. Anyway, I'll leave it at 100. You get the point. Fade edge and shift edge are basically about blending the edge of the sky into the edge of the foreground. So fade edge uh, is basically, you can see that fading that way, which I don't want to do here. And shift edge, if you look like along the horizon as I move it, there it is at 100 and there it is at zero. It's a lot more uh, abrupt. And so it basically just fades or shifts the edge of the mask so that you can get a better blend between sky and foreground, which is uh, the entire point of the tool is uh, you want to make it look like this is something that you really saw. In other words, it needs to be a compelling composite. Scale is basically a zoom function so that you can pull in if you got cool clouds or cool colors, but they're not quite in their exact position that you want them to you can scale that accordingly to kind of recompose your sky. And level, of course, left or right will adjust the tilt of your sky. Maybe you have a little bit tilted sky in uh, that you replace and you need to level it a little bit. It's just a handy little thing to have. Now the appearance section, that is the appearance of the sky. So you have a warmth or temperature slider. Go to the right, the sky gets warmer. Go to the left, the sky gets cooler. Uh, in this photo, I actually kind of like it a little bit cool, but I like uh, I like some coolness in my sunsets, which seems counterintuitive, I guess, but um, I kind of like that interplay of cool and warm tones. Uh, but regardless, that's a way to adjust the temperature. Just keep in mind, when, uh, if and when you do that, uh, you also want to keep track of that visually uh, in the lighting section. We'll talk about that in a second. Brightness, of course, is just going to increase or decrease the brightness of the sky. Haze is going to either add if you drag it to the right or reduce haze, which uh, increases the intensity of the color if you do reduce it. And then blur amount, this is really fun and kind of cool. Blur amount blurs the sky. So that just looks like a really long exposure, which I'm personally a fan of. I think that looks really cool. Um, and then you can change the blur angle if you want to, but um, that's not something I would normally do but I love the left to right blur. However, keep in mind, if you have water in the photo or reflection, or in this case, I have some distant waves kind of over in this bay, that doesn't go with a long exposure sky. So that would be kind of a dead giveaway for lack of a better word. So just keep that in mind. If you have things that should be blurred on a long exposure like water, and you blur the sky, but they're not blurred, it's not gonna be uh, true to life, I guess is a way of putting it. So just keep that in mind, something to think about. Okay, foreground lighting, this is super important. I, I mentioned earlier that the direction of the light is one of the most important things to think about. Another thing that I think is incredibly important to think about is lighting for the foreground, because again, you're trying to make this look like it actually happened. So if I turn this off, that's the base original foreground, and I turn it back on, you can see Photo Raw basically goes in and picks a color shade from the new sky and applies that somewhat to the foreground. You can see the color shade here. Now, you can go and pick a different one if you would like to. You just click this little dropper, one click there, and say I want to pick blue, and when I do, you can see the foreground lighting color has essentially changed. If I pick that, uh, click that dropper again, come over here and get kind of the yellow, you can see it's kind of gone that way. In other words, you have the ability to be flexible and do this the way you see fit. I'm gonna go back to basically the color that was previously selected by on one. I always find that it works pretty well. 
Um, I might have some refinement to it, but I'm generally happy with the color that it's selecting for me. I'm assuming it's picking one of the more dominant colors out of the replaced sky. Now it applies that across the foreground and it kind of fades. As, as you can see, the amount of it kind of fades from the sky down to the foreground. Now there's this distance slider, which is gonna allow you to further refine that. If I pull that left, you're gonna basically get less of it. And as I increase this distance slider, it's kind of pulling it kind of almost like a radial, uh, not a radial, a gradient, like a linear gradient. It's kind of pulling that down uh, more into the photo. So something to think about, adjust that light accordingly. Foreground, this is just like an amount slider. Just be careful, like at 100, I think is way too much. You might even reduce it a little bit. And also keep in mind, um, you wanna match this, like I said, to what you did in the sky. So reducing this might complement like a change in temperature up here or a reduction in opacity if you did that up here, that sort of thing. So it's all a delicate dance. Just try to make it look as believable as possible and get the lighting and colors and all that kind of stuff to kind of match. And as you can see here, this edges, it adjusts the strength of the lighting around the edges, so it basically helps blend that foreground into the sky. So I think I'm gonna increase the amount here a little bit, and I actually think I'm gonna take the opacity of the sky down a little bit, which is gonna reduce that intensity. And I actually think that looks a little bit better. I didn't do anything on develop, which I generally recommend doing first because it, especially if you have a raw file, you want to kind of develop that raw file and get it looking the way you want it to look. But then, and I'm not going to do this, this is not a full workflow video, but then any effects or local adjustments would come after the sky replacement in my workflow because I want to go and apply those after I've kind of got my base composite together. I would probably mostly go to local adjustments and do some refinements there. Once you've completed replacing the sky, you very likely you're going to need to go do some refinements to the image overall. So in other words, you may not be done just because you got the sky looking good. But I think that sky does look good. There it is before and there it is now. Now the only other section is reflection. I need to get a different photo and show you how that works. Okay, different photo, but uh, here it is, a little uh, place in France and um, reflection. All you gotta do is click it and it will add that reflection to the water. It automatically detects the water and masks it in. And you've got multiple overlay modes here. So you can see you've got screen, light, and dark, and all these different things. I recommend experimenting, although I generally find that overlay works best. Amount is how much of that is coming through, right? You can increase or decrease the intensity. It's kind of like an opacity slider. And then you can shift vertical if you need to, to make the reflection better match what you're seeing in the sky. So if I want a little bit of that streaks of cloud coming through, you can see how I lowered that and that looks pretty good. Whereas I go like this and I'm getting a little bit more of that darkness. And again, keep in mind that your sky has a natural edge. And so just, you're going to have to be careful about how far you slide it. Um, I think something like that looks pretty good overall. But that's how reflection works. And real quick, I wanted to go back to foreground lighting. I totally forgot. There's two different modes here. These are basically overlay or kind of blend modes, for lack of a better word. You've got multiply and screen. Multiply is the one that I use all the time, really. At uh, screen just ends up a, a bit, quite a bit lighter, whereas multiply to me seems to work best. Again, experiment, see what works best for you, but um, it's all about creating that natural look, blending uh, the directional light and the color of the foreground to match the color of the new sky and that sort of thing. And then also keep in mind, in uh, various sections here, you've got this little reverse arrow which will reset your settings. You can do that here or you can do it up here for the entire photo and that sort of thing. Lots of power, lots of control, frankly a lot of fun. I like replacing skies, it's something I've done for a long time and it just gets easier and easier and better and better. And this new version of On One Photo Raw 2023 is doing a fantastic job with their SkySwap AI. The masking's improved, the tool's better. It's uh, it's just solid all the way around. So hope this gives you a good quick start with how to use the tool and get the most out of it. Thanks for watching my friends. And if you found this video useful, check out that video about On One and I'll be back soon with more. You guys take care and until then, adios.